guys, so today we are going to be talking about the love of my life, the best thing that has ever happened to me, literary fiction. But before I get into all of that, I did just want to say that there are officially five, over now, I think there's like 530 of you at the time that I'm filming this video, and that may seem like a small number to a lot of people especially in the grand scheme of things of like people having thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of, all of subscribers on here but I cannot begin to tell you how much it means to me that 530 of you like to listen to me talk about books like when you think about 500 people all standing in one area together like that is a shit ton of people and I am just so grateful there are a few of you who have commented like on my videos nearly since the very beginning and it just makes me so happy and so I just wanted to uh, use a little quick minute of this video to say thank you and tell you guys how much I appreciate every single one of you. This is so exciting. Now I love literary fiction. I adore it so much. It is definitely my preferred genre to read and I just love it. There are so many different stories that can get told within literary fiction because it is kind of a broader genre. And I think that literary fiction scares a lot of people because when you think of literary fiction, I think people go to like Bunny by Mona Awad, Otessa Moshfeg, like those like weird girl books that, you know, are making their rounds. And I also think that people think of just like no plot, just vibes. And people hear that described as literary fiction a lot because that can be the case. And people hear that described as literary fiction and they're like, oh my gosh, that's going to be so boring. I don't want to read that. Literary fiction is not for me. I really wanted to make this video because I think that literary fiction can actually be very um, accessible to a lot of different people. I think that there is so much life within these books and so many amazing stories and amazing authors. So I just wanted to do a video where I'm going to be talking about books that I think are very good starter books into the genre of literary fiction. Before we start this video, I'm going to talk about what I think is literary fiction versus like general fiction, historical fiction, that kind of stuff. So literary fiction is generally more character driven than plot driven. But the way that I kind of see that is, is that there is an overarching plot most of the time. Sometimes it really is just like all vibes in her monologue nothing's really going on except for the vibes and the character development like that 100% is but we're not going to be talking about those books in this video because I think that if you were just to j jump into that it might not be like I'm trying to make you love literary fiction as much as possible you know what I mean so I'm just going to throw you into the deep end like I want you to kind of get in the shallow end a little bit and then we'll kind of you know see and assess how you feel about them to me it is definitely more character driven but character driven in the sense where you're following the character and their feelings and their life through the overarching plot if that makes any sense so they're normally very emotional um, a lot of maybe not inner dialogue, but you really are sucked into the lives of these characters throughout following the plot, if that makes any sense. So for example, Pachinko, which is, I feel can be categorized as a few different genres. I would consider Pachinko to be literary fiction instead of historical fiction because even though it takes place in the past and there did have to be a ton of research to be done in the past that is a very character driven story okay same as the covenant of water um and then you have books like the nightingale which i would consider the nightingale historical fiction not literary fiction since so you have the nightingale by first and hannah and then you have james by percival everett so the Nightingale, I would consider historical fiction because even though you are following the characters' emotions throughout the plot, the main, main overarching storyline, it's essentially World War II. It's a World War II novel. Names by Percival Everett, even though that also takes place in the past and a ton of research had to be done for that book, 
that is definitely a literary fiction book to me because of the way that the characters interact with the other characters and the way they develop throughout the story. I really hope this is making sense right now because it's actually a lot harder to explain than I thought it was going to be. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I love each of these books that I'm about to talk to you about. I love them so much. And I think you'll kind of see what I mean by like character driven versus plot driven as I talk about these books. And I also tried to pick books that I didn't feel like I saw on YouTube a lot. I do have to say that I've been watching a lot of these videos because A, I really want to find a lot more content creators on here who read similar books to the ones that I read. Um, so if you make videos on YouTube and you love literary fiction, please leave a comment down below and I'll check out your channel because I have really been itching for that content. First one that I wanted to talk about today is Disorientation, but I really am going to butcher this. But it's Elaine and I think that is Chow. Please don't hate me if I'm mispronouncing that. I'm so sorry. This book was so, so fantastic. I, every time I think about my reading experience, I, with this book, I just get so excited and I just want to reread it over and over and over again. Also, can we take a second for the cover? Like this cover is fantastic. And all of these like things that are flying off the bed that are suspended in the air have something to do with the plot, which I just think is so smart and so clever. So basically this takes place, this is also a campus novel. So this takes place at a college and we have our college student and her name is Ingrid. I have terrible things, okay? She is actually, as her PhD, she is studying this famous Chinese poet, I wanna say, and Ingrid herself is Chinese. I believe she's Chinese American. She is studying this ultra 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 famous Chinese poet and story storyteller that's what her thesis is on and it kind of says in the beginning at least on the blurb I remember this vividly that she is so ready to graduate and never have to think about anything Chinese ever again because it's just like all the it's all consuming what she's studying and one day while she is studying in the library she makes a discovery that is really crazy about our poet that she is studying and she starts to uncover the real life of this extremely famous culture defining poet and she is uh, trying to decide about whether or not she wants to release this information and then eventually the information does get released and her entire life changes the college campus changes everything around her just begins to shift and she's dealing with the aftermath of this information coming to light and getting out and it basically upends everything for her it is funny it is very propulsive you really want to keep reading and finding out what's going on and she does such a good job of there's such a good juxtaposition of it being fun and lighthearted at times because what they're doing some points in this book is like absolutely ridiculous and then the seriousness of the topic that is centered around this discovery that I don't want to say because I think that you should not know going into it. I think you should not know what the secret is. I think this is a lovely, lovely book. Um, and I think that it is definitely going to hook you. And while also talking about a lot of overarching themes that are really important. So this book is actually the book that got me into literary fiction. This is the one that kind of started it all for me. Um, I owe a lot to this book. I was so enraptured and just my eyes glued to the page. I had no idea that people could write like this. Like I just had no idea. Like this book, I owe a debt to and I loved it so much. Um, this is Homegoing by Yag Yossi. This book is another one that I think could technically, like people could see it as historical fiction, but it's definitely, definitely literary fiction to me. This book takes place, um, it starts in Ghana and it takes place um, during the slave trade. And so we have two sisters 
and one of them gets sold into slavery and gets taken to America and the other sister becomes the wife of like a British uh like slave trader. He takes her as his wife instead of selling her and it follows their two lineages lineages um until present day and so it kind of is showing how even though they started at the same place how these two things two extremely separate things happening to them changes literally everything everything and it is very emotional it's sad a lot of parts of it i don't think i have to explain that a lot of parts of it are absolutely terrible it doesn't shy away from those things it doesn't shy away from talking about it which i think is really important every chapter is a different generation this author really does such an amazing job of even though you're only spending a chapter with some of these characters you feel like you know them so well and they're so moving it's just a moving book like i don't really know how else to say it i was very very into it <laughs> i think that it is so fantastic that you want to know if these two generations or these two lineages are ever going to meet again um you really want to you're rooting for these characters and you're seeing them make hard and bad decisions and you just want the best for them and it is very realistic to me in the sense that these characters are not making the right decision every single time and sometimes they are and sometimes it doesn't really get you where you think it's going to go it's gripping um you always want to know what's going to happen next and how the the how the decision making of the generation before is going to impact the next generation and then just seeing the juxtaposition of how different these sisters families end up being so next we have a book that i literally can't stop thinking about i finished this i want to say last year or the year before and this book really impacted me a lot the last few lines really had me bawling like completely crying i think about the last few lines of this book a lot <laughs> like i really do we have they're going to love you by meg howry this is such a beautiful, beautiful book about art and family and life in general, essentially. The actual pull quote for this right here, I think is really good, so I'm just gonna read it. It says, a deeply beautiful book. A lot of writers dream of achieving something like this novel where art and life and love all seem to be addressed in a way we haven't read before. And I definitely think that that's true. So we have one family um the mom and the daughter live across the country i believe i want to say they live in california and the girl her name is carlisle carlisle's dad and his partner live in new york and they are both very very involved in the ballet scene um there are choreographers i want to say directors like they are very well known in the ballet scene and carlisle loves going to stay with robert and james and she in her head loves staying with them so much she loves living in their brownstone with them and living in new york and she just adores them and per the custody arrangement she only stays with them during the summer but she thinks that if she is good enough um she can convince them to want her to stay with them full time so not only does that translate into like normal everyday things but she also really becomes enthralled with ballet and she thinks that if she can become the best ballet dancer that they will be so impressed by her and want her to work for like the new york company and want to direct her and choreo like choreograph things for her and she is just so convinced that she has to earn her place in their life with their family even though she doesn't and you also have the present timeline which is where carlisle has not spoken to her father or his partner james in years because she did something horrible and she did something horrible her dad cut her off and that by association led her to be cut off from her father or from the partner james and she gets a phone call 
that her father is dying and so she has to go to New York to kind of try to patch things up with him and things up with him before he dies. Um, and this book is so emotional. <laughs> it's so good. The entire time, like she's leaving, like dropping hints about what she did that was so horrendous. And you're trying to figure out what would make a dad not want to talk to you ever again. Like the entire time you're just like, what is it? Like, what is this thing that she did? Like, I don't understand. Um, and this book is such a great exploration of love and relationships within your family and all of that crazy stuff of art. Um, she really does love ballet, even though she's using it it begins as a means to get their approval. She really does love it. Very good. I think that everyone, everyone would benefit from having this book in their lives and reading it. Okay, so next is another one of my favorite little books. Um, that is Talking at Night by Claire Daverly. I have actually seen this one a little bit more on YouTube, which has made me so happy because I loved this book so much. It was so, so good. Um, I do have to say a little disclaimer. She does do the Sally Rooney thing where there is no quotation marks. So if that's going to piss you off, just, just know that going into it. I personally, that has never bothered me. We have uh, this gorgeous little story that's also terribly heartbreaking. So I needed to make sure I knew the, the character's names. I will not remember a character's name. I will remember everything about a book except for the character's name. It doesn't make any sense to me. But we have Will and Rosie are the main characters of this book. They grow up, I believe, down the street from each other. They go to the same school. But Rosie has a twin and her twin becomes best friends with Will and so Will is at her house a lot, at Rosie's house. Essentially, they are in high school, they are on the cusp of a great love of their life, really have like developed strong feelings for each other and then something horrifically tragic happens and that causes Will and Rosie to kind of drift apart from each other and not be with each other. But throughout their lives, like literally throughout their entire lives, they just keep getting pulled back into each other. This is such a great story about longing and not just for a person, but longing to know who you are and what you're supposed to do in this world and what you were here for and trying to find someone to do life with that you really, really care about and love that isn't just there are characters that will really stick with me. Part of the book is that you don't know what this tragic thing is that happened. Like you do, but you don't know the whole story about it. It's very interesting what happens, um, but really I just keep thinking about how drawn they are to each other. Like no matter how many years pass without them talking, um, no matter what they've done, they are just so drawn to each other. And so you're just watching them navigate. This is definitely more of a character driven story, but there is still an overarching plot of what happened. Why can't they be together? Why can't they make it work out kind of a thing? Um, this book is very beautiful. It's devastating. It's relatable and it's great. And I loved it. Okay. Next, um, one of my favorite books of last year is My Last Innocent Year by Daisy Albert Florin. This has uh, such a good theme to it like honestly and the writing is so good I definitely this is a debut novel and I am definitely going to read every single thing that this woman comes out with until the end of time I'm obsessed and it talks about a lot of hard topics uh, I think that part of what makes literary fiction so great is that it talks about a lot of overarching themes that are complicated we have our main character Isabel she is just starting college this is a coming of age story kind of going to school I think it's 1998 99 the Lewinsky Clinton situation has happened it's all over the news it's all a lot of people are talking about um and at the beginning of her college career she actually unfortunately is the victim of a non-consensual sexual act and that kind of steamrolls things for her she's very confused um she doesn't really know what to do about what happened to her and through all of this she has a writing professor who makes her feel seen and known and 
all of those things and she forms a relationship with her professor. Through that, she is trying to grapple with getting older. She is trying to figure out what consent actually is um, and what that means for you. And there isn't an answer, I will say, because consent is such a hard thing to figure out sometimes um, because this professor definitely is using his positional power over her to make her feel known and seen and loved in order to get her to, you know what I mean? It's like, the, it's a whole conversation. This book is also very funny. Um, there's one line that I don't think I'll ever forget in this book and it is one of her classmates is talking to her and in her head, everything is just so complicated because she's younger and things are not black and white. There's a whole lot of gray and one of her classmates is talking to her about how she's having this relationship with her professor and he says, I don't know what kind of Russian novel you're living in, but you're just fucking your professor and he doesn't even have tenure. <laughs> and I don't think I'll ever forget that. Like that was funny. It is a really good comp campus novel about her just discovering what it means to trust herself and her own opinions and everything that's going on. I definitely think this is really good um, reading, especially if you're a girl. I love Brit Bennett. I love her with all my little heart, okay? I think that she is absolutely freaking fantastic. Um, I need her to write another book so badly, it's not even funny. I just want that so bad, okay? Is that so much to ask for? I just really need it, okay? So let's start with The Mothers. This book does talk about abortion, um, so if that is a triggering topic for you, just keep that in mind. Essentially, we have two girls, they are best friends growing up. They actually are growing up in Oceanside, California, which is where my family lives. And so it was just such a fun little treat for me to read about this and that's actually where the author is from as well and so um it's all very realistic so like reading everything and being like oh my gosh yes I know exactly where that is and yes that's that pier is supposed to be that the setting was really fantastic for me but we have two friends and they are Nadia and Aubrey and they meet at this church I believe instantly become best friends um Nadia is a black woman and Aubrey is white and so they also are kind of talking about racial things as well in this book and um, their friendship just really deepens. But Nadia has a secret <laughs> and she does not tell Aubrey her secret. Nadia's secret is that she got pregnant by this boy named Luke and also got an abortion. Now, I do think that it's important to note this book is not specifically pro-life or pro-choice. This is just Nadia making that decision and how that decision impacts the lives of the people around her because she doesn't share that secret with anyone. And so people do things unknowingly because they don't know that this happened. A lot of decisions or reasons that led our main character to this decision. And so it's kind of unraveling that unraveling this huge secret that she hasn't told anyone what that is to keep that secret inside of you and not have anyone to talk to about it, it and how it impacts everything her relationship with her family her relationship with her friends her relationship with herself the reason why this book is called the mothers is just really great um this is another one that i will remember the ending of this book forever i'll remember those last few lines for a very very long time it is just very moving about um betrayal love friendship um and what that means and how those things can affect you when you lean on those things and when you pull away from them and then next we have the vanishing half this book i believe was this one named for a prize or was it oh it was book of the month's book of the year this book we have two main characters they are twins they grew up in a town where not really any white people live but this population and it kind of goes into the reason i can't remember exactly why but this population of black people all typically have light skin and so as these twins are growing up, one of them decides that she wants to pass as a white person. And one of them decides that they want to stay not passing, essentially. Go off on their very different paths. 
and then they are reunited after they have these two extremely different lives. Um, the sister who's passing her entire life is a lie. No one knows, like her husband, her kids, like literally no one knows. So interesting. Um, another book that is about this topic, I believe it's called Passing and I believe they made it, made it a movie. I think that that s served heavily as inspiration. Very good commentary on race and family and what it means to have a secret and leave your entire life behind and be living a lie and how different these two sisters lives ended up being and how that impacted their children and it is so interesting and you can see the sister who is passing like how she's constantly worried that people are going to find out about her secret so enthralling and interesting and i think that um this and the mothers i think should be required reading i think that they're just so valuable in the content that they talk about so yeah those are the books that i just talked about that i think are great introductions to literary fiction i think i'm gonna do a part two just because as you can see the majority of the books on here are literary fiction and as i said i'm obsessed with it so i think i am going to make another video later about part two thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble about all of these books if any of these seem interesting to you that you want to pick up leave a comment let me know and if you have any literary fiction recommendations please let me know i'm always looking for new recommendations so i'll see you guys later Thank you.